Canada's premier racing series is back at the Magic Mile. The NASCAR Pinty Series is set for 100 laps of excitement at New Hampshire Motor Speedway. Each driver in the field is looking for championship points and a race win. With 11 hard-fought races in the books, it's been an all-out assault for the championship. From road and street courses to tight bull rings, no driver has been willing to give an inch. The NASCAR Pinty Series rolls into New Hampshire with a points battle for the ages. Kevin Lacroix has muscled his way into the points lead. While two-time champion Andrew Ranger looks to chase down his rival and regain his championship form. Look out, the true north strong and fast is stateside. This is the 12th round of the NASCAR Pinty Series on TSN. We're in Loudoun, New Hampshire for the Visit New Hampshire 100. I'm Dave Bradley along with Adam Ross and Todd Lewis's trackside. Adam, the second visit of Canada's series to New Hampshire's one mile track. Dave, what a great concept Loudoun staff has come up with. Gather the top tier NASCAR late model series, throw in the modifieds and have a weekend long party. And that party is in full gear regarding the NASCAR Pinty's point standings. Once again, rolling into New Hampshire, the championship is super tight. Kevin Lacroix has the lead by just two points over Andrew Ranger. These two are really the only contenders we have with just two races left. Lacroix was fastest in practice yesterday while Ranger struggled. Now, yeah, Crew Chief Dave White and Andrew Ranger scaled and rescaled that car. They hope they got it right for today's 100 lap event. Now let's send it down to Todd Lewis with how E3 qualifying went earlier today. Todd? Thanks, guys. We have seen Kevin Lacroix fast here at New Hampshire, and that has continued in this morning's qualifying session. The number 74 driver from St. Eustache, Quebec, posted the quickest time in qualifying, circling this slightly longer than a mile track in 30.040 seconds, an average speed of 122.7 miles per hour for his 13th career pole and smashing the track record in the process. Now, Kevin told me that they did make a slight change in the car for qualifying, wasn't really happy with it. They've gone back to their practice setup, they think that will be better for the long run on the race. Todd, these are the same cars the teams ran last week at the 410th mile St. Nostash Oval. What have these guys done to get the cars to handle better on this one mile track? This longer track requires some special attention by teams. They've added some extra bracing. What they want to do is reduce the flex in some of the body panels, so they've added a little bit of extra bracing along the side panels as here. That continues on the windshield. Some extra bracing on the windshield. They want to reduce the flex and get every aerodynamic advantage that they can. Also up near the front of the cars, teams have added a little bit of extra tape, gives them a little bit of extra downforce on the car. Again, thinking of aerodynamics, that right decision in terms of aerodynamic choices could be the difference in a winning car. Interesting stuff. Thanks very much, Todd. Thank you. You bet. And since we're in the live free or die state, we decided to look at how American drivers have fared in the Pinty series in the past. We've had 23 American drivers, 48 starts, five podiums, and 13 top tens. Among their accolades, two Cup Series wins, including a Daytona 500, 26 Xfinity wins, 28 truck wins, and a handful of championships. But let's go racing today. We'll send it down to Mi Lin Wong for New Hampshire Tourism with the command. Drivers! Sound of Canadian horsepower fires up here on the front straightaway in New Hampshire. And that was a look from inside the office of Donald Teach. And that's Kevin Lacroix who's waiting to fire the engine on the number 74 bumper to bumper Dodge. And you'll see a lot of different strategies. Some of these drivers won't fire because they want to conserve fuel. Some of them are going to start their engines, and they may not leave them running. They'll wait until the field takes off. And there you see the three of Jason Hathaway, one of the drivers to start late as we take a look at your clean flow starting lineup with the field rolling off. Kevin Lacroix, your pole sitter, as we mentioned, DJ Kennington will start alongside. Row number two is Andrew Ranger in the 27, Donald Teach in the 24. Back to the third row, Alex LeBay in the 36 and Pete Shepard in the 7, a couple of teammates. Row 4 is Alex Gannett in the Rona EpiPen 18 with Brandon White in the 04. 
Row 5 is the 22 of Mark Antoine Cameron, and welcome back to the 73 of Cole Powell, who started alongside. 28 is Julia Landauer. Matthew Kingsbury drives the 75. Jason Hathaway behind the wheel of the number three, alongside L.P. Dumoulin of the WeatherTech 47. Brett Taylor in the 46. Anthony Simone in the one. And we look back to row number nine. Mark Dilley in the 64. Dexter Stacy in the 21. Row 10 is J.F. Dumoulin. Different number in the 07, and he'll start alongside the 02 of T.J. Renamato. Problems getting the Gannett number 18 to fire, Dave. It just will not fire. It looks like they're going to send a truck down pit road to give him a push. And will they be able to drop the clutch and get that car rolling here very shortly? Let's take a look at E3 Spark Plug's race analysis, Adam. 100 laps on this one-mile oval. Chamber of Commerce weather here, Dave. It is perfect weather. Yeah, we paid the extra money for the weather here today. Definitely a very nice day for a race. But there's a lot of storylines we'll be following over the course of this 100-lap race. And before we go green, let's check in one more time with Todd Lewis. Guys, the number one question along pit road is fuel mileage. No one I spoke to is comfortable making it without any issues to the 100 lap mark. Some are thinking about stopping. Some are going to wait and see how it goes. Guys are already trying to save fuel. Kevin Lacroix even took his time starting his car. Faster speeds this year, burns more fuel, and so does battling for position. And we are fixing to go green here. Kevin Lacroix, one last scrub of the tires, Dave. It's almost ready to bring them up to speed. Remember the difference in points coming into this event. Just two between Kevin Lacroix and the 27 of Andrew Ranger. The pace car is in. Ryan Vaughn from New Hampshire Tourism with the green. He waves, and we're underway. Not a good start for DJ Kennington in the 17. He has lost a handful of spots. But the first order of business, the bonus point for leading the lap. Andrew Ranger does not want Lacroix to get that point. He is going to fight as hard as he can. And what's interesting here on the mile, drafting does play a factor. It's much like down the back stretch at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. You pull up behind the car in front of you, you'll get a tow. Speeds coming out of turn number four. Kevin Lacroix leads lap number one as Donald Teach working the inside along with DJ Kennington. And this is one of those racetracks, Dave, where the inside lane is not necessarily the preferred groove because it's very hard to get onto the throttle. The same way the car on the outside with a bigger arc here can get on the throttle on the high side. So you're going to see a lot of cars running that higher groove out there with great success today. So Alex LeBay just floating that car through the bends here in the 36. Good look at Alex Gannett, a substitute driver in the Rona EpiPen Cantor number 18, battling with Pete Shepard in the 7. Some of our fans might not realize it, but a driver like Alex Gannett in the 18 has quite a bit of experience at this racetrack, whereas we ride on board with Mark Antoine Cameron with very little experience. Gannett, Alex LeBay, Donald Teach, they've all run in the ACT series here at this racetrack, and this is a place where seat time is really going to pay you back. And look at Teej using that experience to his advantage, taking a look on the Mopar number 27 of Andrew Ranger. It's a battle for second spot early in the race as we ride on board with DJ Kennington. Teej actually had himself in an inopportune position there, and you can see a little bit of rubbing on that right front tire. So he's been in contact with something, but when you get pinned down to the inside, the car behind you is gonna get a huge run up the outside. And you can see it's easy to start a pass here. It's difficult to complete it as DJ Kennington ducks to the inside of the 24. Now watch Teach. He'll get the run on the outside down the back straightaway. And a lot of what these drivers are doing right now, Dave, while it looks like they're really mixing it up, they're learning for later in the race when it really matters. How much of a run can I get running the extreme bottom? He was two lanes lower than Donald Teach there, and Teach powered out of the corner much better. They hang on to the throttle before letting off, jumping on the brakes for a little bit, letting that car roll through the ends here on a relatively flat surface. I mean, New Hampshire, for the length of track, it is a pretty flat track when you come to the turns. 
You're absolutely right as Pete Shepard sails it down into the corner on the inside. I think it's safe to call that a New Hampshire slide job where you just ease down into the corner, up into the car on the outside's groove, leaving Alex LeBay nowhere to go. We're heading for a break, but we'll be back with more of the Visit New Hampshire 100. Race number 12 of the NASCAR Pinty Series, the Visit New Hampshire 100, is brought to you by Pinty's, making great food fun. Mopar, we built it, we know it. And by Silver Wax. Still this battle for fourth spot between Donald Teague in the 24 and DJ Kennington in the Castrol Edge Dodge. A little bit of side-by-side -side racing there's let Andrew Ranger pull away by a car length or two and out in front. Look at how small that 74 of Kevin Lacroix is. Not really a shock to see the bumper-to-bumper -bumper Dodge that far out in front. You remember here last year, he was the class of the field by far. He led 90 of 100 laps en route to victory. It was a dominant performance last season for Laquan. As we can see, he's already put a lap on TJ Renamato in the 0-2. Renamato had some problems in practice yesterday. Backed that car into the wall, but the crew got it fixed up for today. One driver who is not in this race was hoping to be, but unfortunately couldn't make it, is standing by in the infield with our own Todd Lewis. Todd? We're happy to see him back at the racetrack. Not quite cleared to get back in the car yet, but Alex, tell us about your, your illness and tell us how quickly you might be able to get back in the car. Well, I got uh, myocarditis, uh, a viral infection. Um, so uh, it's just rest. There's no really any medication that's gonna get me back better. Um, once I'm fully rested and recovered, it's gonna be back as usual. And uh, I wanted to try to get back in the car before the last race, but uh, I don't think it's gonna happen. Uh, I just wanna get back better and uh, be ready for uh, 2020. Glad to see you back. Good luck next year, too. Thank you so much. Tegley, and he posted a photo of himself in a hospital bed, which is pretty scary to see, but he was giving everybody the thumbs up and said, don't worry, I will be back and I'll be 100% when I return to the racetrack. And he's in good spirits as we see them fan out three wide. Again, going around the slower car, TJ Renamato, Jason Hathaway took advantage, makes a move to the inside of Julia Landauer, Cole Powell couldn't quite make it through. Powell making a return in the 73, driving for DJK out of the DJ Kennington shop, along with Julia Landauer in the 28, the car just ahead. Another one of those drivers with plenty of experience here, only behind the wheel of a NASCAR style modified. So a much different driving style for these race cars, but Cole Powell doesn't mind the speed. Now, speaking of the speed, you can see the hood flex on the tri-car number 73 in the draft of the 28 of Julia Landauer. But look in just behind this two-car battle, the 75 of Matthew Kingsbury doing well for a rookie. Yeah, Kingsbury has looked very comfortable behind the wheel. Right behind him is Anthony Simone in the Silver Line Tools number one. A couple of exciting drivers out there, nose to tail. Kingsbury was not afraid to mix it up last week at St. Dash. And Anthony Simone, we know he's not afraid to mix it up at any time, Dave. Driving the sister car, Kingsbury is out of the Kevin Lacroix shop with sponsorship by Dura King. We are hoping to see Kingsbury at the Pinty's Fall Brawl, the season finale for the NASCAR Pinty Series. It takes a long time to get up to full throttle through that turn, but how much speed you can make up in the middle of the corners is a huge deal as Donald Teach swings to the inside of Andrew Ranger. Again, the goal will be to clear the 27, and he's done it. That is a battle for second spot, so Mark, the driver of the number 24 from Wacatel, Quebec, up into second, but look who's coming, DJ Kennington and Andrew Ranger trying to cross over once again. Well, Ranger used that momentum to cross him over, but he's really kind of screwed himself because DJ Kennington sucks in on the outside, and that's, like we said, the preferred line, so Kennington gets the edge going into three. It's funny to see how the air affects these cars. You see the 24 as they start racing side by side. The 24 opens about a five-car length gap on that battle. I don't know if it's the clean air or if it's the fact that Donald Teague can run exactly the line he wants through the entire corner. 
Side by side, you have to compromise at some point. When you've got the track to yourself, you can run right where you want, wherever the car feels the best. On board the Mopar Pennzoil Dodge briefly was Andrew Rangers. They all stretch out single file. We still should mention the 74. Kevin Lacroix is your race leader here with 18 laps in the books. He is well out in front, more than half a straightaway over Donald Teach in the 24. Cannington, now that he's gotten around Ranger, is holding pace with Teach as they go down into one and two. I still get the feeling a lot of these drivers are just feeling their cars out. Where can they find room to make a move and how can they finish it? So here's Cole Powell still in very much the same position as he was before. Looks to the inside of Landauer, so Kingsbury to the outside. Almost got on the apron, did the driver of the 73. A battle for 11th position. Kingsbury up on the outside as a caution flag waves here on lap 20 for the first time in the Visit New Hampshire 100 for the NASCAR PNT Series. Getting reports of debris up in turn number three. The reason for this yellow, Dave. There it is. Let's see. Cleanup crew will head out on the track and get that collected pretty briefly. It won't take too long to get everything squared away and back underway, but have a listen. We talked about saving fuel, and that's what Kevin Lacroix is doing. Yeah, savvy move by the driver of the 74. We're getting reports of problems with the 24, and we can see it ourselves. He is stopped on pit road. Big problems for the driver who is in second spot in the Zerkery Acura number 24. Donald Teach needing a push back to his pit stall as pit lane opens. You can see the green flag waving. Who's going to come in for fuel? Will anybody? DJ Kennedy is down under the yellow line. He's committed to the pit. So is Andrew Ranger. Kevin Lacroix stays on the racetrack. And this push truck could get in the way here, Dave. Well, I have to move along fairly quickly because the two cars out of the DJK stable are coming towards their pit pads. And that is where Todd is standing by. Todd? Land pit stops for fuel for the 27. Andrew Ranger and team decided they could not make it. A splash of fuel, a quick handling adjustment. He's on his way. Teammate the 17, DJ Kennington, also along pit road. So is the 47 and other takers. You know, I wonder if maybe Donald Teed was trying to save fuel, killed the motor, and just couldn't get it refired again. But they've got it up on the jack, so... I don't think that would be the problem, Dave. Crews taking a look underneath. You see the 22, Mark Antoine Cameron and the GM Paye Chevrolet. The Bullies truck stop, number 21, Dexter Stacy pitting for some what appears to be fuel as well. So a lot of these drivers getting in. Quick splash back out on track. We're under caution here in New Hampshire. Welcome back to New Hampshire Motor Speedway and the Visit New Hampshire 100. As we celebrate another milestone, the 50th race for Pinty's being the title sponsor of the NASCAR Pinty Series. 91 drivers, 12 different winners over that time period. That's pretty impressive when you think about it, David. Another huge launch for Kevin Lacroix out in front, leaving the teammates Pete Shepard in the 7, Alex LeBay in the 36 to fight for second in LeBay. That was a no-doubter the way he threw that into the corner. Shepard going to try him back on the inside, but that'll be a tough move to make. Yeah, they're teammates. They haven't raced together all season, so these two are going to fight hard as they head into turn number three. Shepard on the inside, LeBay upstairs. A pair of Ford Fusions. And you can see them getting into the throttle, backing out of the throttle. They don't want to make contact with each other, but they're trying to get that power down. Now Pete Shepard in the Shelby roofing number seven. He's happy to stay in line. Alex Gannett not far behind on the rope at Rona Epipen number 18. And look at Jason Hathaway, fresh off a win and St. Estash last time out as he pulls up alongside the 18. Yeah, Hathaway down in that bottom groove. Alice Gannett up high, and boy, Hathaway drove it in deep enough. Is he going to come across the nose? He will up to the outside groove. Give Hathaway that fourth position. And now Shepard pulls up alongside once again, and this will stick. The pass underneath the 36 of Alex LeBay, so move Shepard into second spot. 
Todd Lewis is in the pits with the 24. That is one unhappy driver in that 24 car. Donald Teach came here to win. That was his sole motivation. Problem with the car stuck in gear. They were passing hammers around trying to knock it loose. They are frustrated under the car. He is frustrated in the car. His opportunity to win, though, is going away. Well, more than it going away, Dave, I'd say it is gone. Yeah, I'd say at this point, but you can see the driver's head in the seat as Donald Teach obviously frustrated. And we've got a three-wide battle. Andrew Ranger on the inside. Julia Landauer pushed upstairs, and it's Kingsbury in the 75 to meet in that sandwich in the Dural King Dodge. They'll race down into turn number three side by side. Landauer has backed out of that battle. I don't know if there was contact there or not, but it was awfully close. Very close as Kingsbury had to do a little skating up the hill. It's a good thing the 28 of Landauer wasn't up there because he needed a little bit more space to make it through that turn. And now a little loose again is the 75. Well, Kingsbury was doing the aggressive thing. He was keeping Andrew pinched down in a spot where Andrew didn't want to be. I just think he got in there either with a little too much rear brake or a little too hot and slid up the track. There you see now back up towards the front battle for a third spot, the Kubota Chevrolet, number three, Jason Hathaway. He took a look underneath the 36 of Alex LeBay. LeBay, we have to remember, a former champion of this series, took a year away last year to race a full season in the Xfinity Series, so obviously has some laps on this track in an Xfinity car and showing just what that experience means. And, of course, Jason Hathaway did not qualify particularly well today, so he's had to make a slow, steady march through the field, but he's making his way towards the front. He's in the top five. Jason Hathaway not known as a very strong qualifier, but come race time, puts the helmet on, drops the visor, and he gets right down to business. You can see Andrew Ranger has made his way back into the top ten. Aggressive restart for Ranger. He's left Kennington a few spots behind. Kennington battling with Mark Hanson. Antoine Cameron in the 22. And a GM Pie Chevrolet up on the outside as DJ Kennington just trying to get the bite off. He can get into the corner very well, as you can see in the Castrol Edge Dodge, and now he'll be able to make it stick as they move on to the front straightaway. I don't think so. Cameron <laughs> was able to plant his car right in the right rear quarter of DJ Kennington. Now, DJ's working with a different spotter today. Steven Simmons, who normally spots for Kennington, has switched over to the 27 of Andrew Ranger. So DJ picked up somebody, and we've got a problem on Jason Hathaway and his number three. Hathaway in the Kubota Chevrolet down to the inside of the racetrack. Todd, what's up? Now, guys, Jason Hathaway has got a miss in that engine. He is down on power and slowing out on the track. Problems with the 46 as well. Brett Taylor along pit row. They pull the left rear tire off. But they believe it is a battery issue. He'll spend some time here on pit lane. I was going to say, you take the left rear off. That's normally how you'd access the battery on a race car. And they are teammates. Both of those cars prepared out of the same shop. Jason Hathaway and Brett Taylor having power issues at about the same time. Yeah, evidently, out of the same shop and getting the same luck here today in New Hampshire. Lady Luck not smiling on them all that brightly. But the driver who seems to have luck in his corner so far today is this man. Driver the bumper to bumper. Total Lubricants number 74. He's led since the drop of the green. Continues to be out front. Welcome back to the 12th race of the NASCAR Pinty Series. We're at New Hampshire Motor Speedway, and we have a battle for eighth position between Mark Antoine Cameron and Matthew Kingsbury. We ride on board with Mark Antoine Cameron. It almost looks like slow motion, but they are traveling at huge speeds out there. Car down along pit lane is driven by Dexter Stacy, and Todd is with him. Todd? Yeah, the 21 along pit lane, Larry Jackson, the crew chief underneath the hood. They've been having some motor problems this weekend. Thought they had it licked before the race today, but looks like they've resurfaced. It's never a good sign when they put the hood back down and there's no sense of urgency. Yeah, you can tell when they're buzzing around a car that maybe they'll be able to get it fixed quickly, but with that one, the engine was silent and there was no buzz. So unfortunately, it looks like Dexter Stacy's day might end early. So right now, Pete Shepard and Alex LeBay are, are battling with similar lap times as the leader, Kevin Lacroix, trying to close that gap. I don't know if that's 
Kevin Lacroix toying with the competition or if it's them trying to turn up the wick and put the pressure on. Well, we take a look at Pete Shepard as we have this battle now between the 22 and the 75, continuing this for eighth position between Mark Antoine Cameron and Matthew Kingsbury. But we talk about Pete Shepard. We have to remember back to a year ago. Yes, he's got limited starts this year in the NASCAR Pinty Series. Last year, he finished a solid second here. Well, again, he is a fantastic race car driver with experience on a lot of different racetracks as Cameron and Kingsbury door-to-door -door trading a little bit of paint out there coming off the corners. Right now, Cole Powell in the tri-car number 73 has a bird's-eye view of what is playing out just ahead. There you go. They get together again off of turn number four. You know, it looks to me like Kingsbury, as he exits the corner, he actually turns away from the wall as though he wants the, the arc of his line not to be headed up towards the concrete, to be sort of headed down the racetrack right there. You see where he kind of pinches down, and I think it's a defensive move because if Cameron did the same thing in reverse and you squeeze into the wall, your day's done. Well, and Cameron being squeezed down, you saw the car kick sideways. That ruins his forward drive trying to get down these long straightaways. So it's a little bit of defense and a little bit of offense all at the same time. Look at how low, though, the 73 of Cole Powell is. He puts those left side tires as we have a change for second place. I was going to say he puts the left side tires down on the yellow line. and seems to be working for him. He's one of the only drivers doing that. Well, different lines are going to work for different people. Todd's in the pits. Yeah, guys, just checking on the fuel mileage for teams. The 36 believe they are good. Those couple of laps of caution should make the difference. The 7, a teammate this weekend. Pete Shepard finished second here last year. They're going the distance. The fuel mileage worked for them last year. They figure it will again. That'll be interesting to see how well that plays out. But it's an option for these drivers. This the 22 GM Pie Chevrolet and Mark Antoine Cameron completes the pass around the 75. That battle lasted for a long, long time out there. Cameron earned that position, and just like you said, there's Cole Powell running down by the yellow light. A little more on Matthew Kingsbury in the 75, the Juro King sponsored number 75, hoping to put together a full program for 2020 here in the NASCAR PT series. So trying to get as many races in as he can. Well, then that would be a great thing. The more full-time racers, the better is Cole Powell along the inside of Kingsbury. That's a battle for the ninth place. And Powell will make quick work of that one. Dies to the inside. He'll slide up in front and continue on his way. So maybe Kingsbury views those general tires just a little bit trying to battle with the 22. And we go to another car that looks very similar to the 75. <laughs> the Lacroix tuning 74 of Kevin Lacroix. Look how calm he looks in that seat. It's, it's just a day in the office for Kevin Lacroix. He is so calm, that car working so well, as it has done through the first half of this race. Then you have the two cars out of the Dave Jacobs shop in the 36 of Alex LeBay and the 7 of Pete Shepard. And they had been closing the gap on the race leader, Lacroix. Now it looks like Lacroix has stretched that advantage out just a little bit once again. Look how close the nose of that race car is to the ground. In the corner, you would expect it, but even on the straightaway, the nose doesn't lift up all that much. All of it aerodynamics, and there we have the Mopar Dodge, the 27 of Andrew Ranger, the Cantor Corona number 18 of Alex Gannett giving chase as Ranger now up into fourth spot. That driver, Gannett, in the top five. Coming into this race, as we mentioned, two-point gap between Kevin Lacroix, who is your points leader, and Andrew Ranger. Now, if you look back earlier in the season, Ranger led by as many as 18 points after the Western Swing. You know, it's such a grueling season as we are under yellow once again, reports of debris. It's momentum, Dave. It's, it's a cycle, and you've got to ride it out, try to minimize your problems and maximize your good days. And that's what the 74 has done to date. Second caution of the afternoon here in the Visit New Hampshire 100, and that lead for Kevin Lacroix is now gone. But an opportunity for pit stops now, and in is the Kubota Chevrolet. Todd? 
his caution, a bit of a break for the three team. They'll jam some fuel in and then try to look under the hood and see if they can figure out what that miss is that's reducing the power on Jason Hathaway's car. Trying to keep from going a lap down, so they got a little bit of work in. They'll come back around and make a stop and look under the hood of the Kubota number three. While we take a break, we'll get the field reset. Kevin Lacroix continues to lead. Pair of Colonials, maybe a little overdressed for the weather here today, but they're enjoying the Visit New Hampshire 100 at New Hampshire Motor Speedway for the NASCAR Pinties Series. Those outfits are hot. Oh, you can see the heat coming off those fellas. They're, <laughs> they mean business. Looking to go back to green, Kevin Lacroix had very good restarts all afternoon, and once again, he's able to open up a little bit of a gap as the field fans out behind. It looks to me as though Alex LeBay, that's the best anybody has done alongside Kevin Lacroix. And he's going to try to get a run off turn number two. Andrew Ranger up around the outside of the seven of Pete Shepard. Here comes his teammate, DJ Kennington, will try to do the same thing. Those two drivers, the 27 and the 17, they've been glued together for like the last three races in a row. Well, remember also, they pitted for fuel, so what they want to do is get up near the leaders and push the pace. They will not let the leaders try to conserve out there. They want to keep them using as much gas as they can. Pete Shepard at this point hoping that he can do all he can to save that fuel. As Todd mentioned earlier on in this race, he has no intentions of stopping. But you can see some of these cars starting to dance around as the general tires start to wear down just a little bit. We're over halfway. This is a fun part of the race. This is where the driver really comes into play. Who's been able to conserve their tires? Who's been able to run a line that, that saves as much as they can for this late race charge? Now it's time to really start to race. board with one of the drivers who has taken fuel. So just to recap, we can tell you Andrew Ranger has been in for a splash of fuel. DJ Kennington has as well in the 17 and the 22 of Mark Antoine Cameron has also topped up. So those are three drivers inside the top 10 who have taken on some gas. Chevrolet in for Alex Tagliani. We talked to Tagliani earlier in the infield. 
great driver coach to have on his side. Of course, Tagliani's run an IndyCar race here as well, uh, finishing inside the top 20 in that race. Down to 25 laps to go, and look at this. Andrew Ranger has caught Alex LeBay in the 36. It's time to apply the pressure. A couple of drivers who have had starts in other series here at New Hampshire as Ranger makes quick work of Alex LeBay, and there's a little acknowledgement back to the driver behind as they set their sights on your race leader. There comes a point where Alex LeBay, he's had all, every opportunity to catch Kevin Laquan. He couldn't. His best opportunity to win this race is to watch Andrew Ranger catch the 74 and hope that they get battling to the point where he can close in. Possibly using a little bit of that draft behind the 27 of Andrew Ranger, maybe able to follow him up and catch the 74. But Ranger has been one driver on the move. He's four starts here at New Hampshire Motor Speedway. He's finished in the top twin, uh, top 10 twice in the KN East series. One point five seconds behind Kevin Laquan. Of course, when you're Andrew Ranger, you don't know that. You're looking through the windshield, and you'll have markers say okay he's just going into the corner and i'm right here on the track next time you hope to be a car length or two closer than that and there you can see it's almost a quarter straight away now back to the mopar number 27 of andrew ranger and there you can see the last lap time still quicker is the 74 the bumper to bumper dodge of kevin lacroix is opening the gap on the 27 of andrew rangers to do championship rivals duke it out here on tsn to the Visit New Hampshire 100, race number 12 on the NASCAR Pinty Series calendar here in 2019. I'm Dave Bradley. Along with me is Adam Ross. Todd Lewis is patrolling the pits for us here this afternoon. The men of the afternoon has been the bumper-to-bumper -bumper Dodge Kevin Lacroix. The 74 has been out in front for all laps so far. Andrew Ranger has pulled away a little bit from Alex LeBay, but not an awful lot. I mean, just a few car enough that he's not really feeling the pressure from the bay, but he's still swapping lap times with Kevin Lacroix. Remember, Andrew Ranger last year failed to finish. 16th place was his final position after a broken track bar in that race, so Andrew Ranger definitely looking to do something better here today. DJ Kennington up on the outside that Castrol Edge Dodge with Pete Shepard in the Shelby Roofing number seven down to the inside. They battle for four. You can see the 17 of DJ Kennington sliding up the racetrack. There goes the seven trying to find that groove as well. The seven has been really loose this last half of the run. You can tell the back just not as happy as Pete Shepard would like to see it. Of all the racetracks we go to, particularly all the ovals, this is one where you can combat the handling of the race car by finding a much different line. You've got a lot of options on where to go, but still, when a car's running the optimal line ahead like DJ Kennington and they're faster, you just can't make that up. And remember, a lack of fuel for the seven, so a light back in as Andrew Ranger has managed to close the gap now. He's picked up four tenths of a second, 1.1 seconds, that gap to your race leader, the 74, Kevin Lacroix. He closed in a ton, pretty much all in one lap, too. Andrew Ranger is coming. Somebody's turned up the temperature here in the Granite State. We have ourselves a race at the front of the field. Look at Andrew Ranger all over. 74 of Kevin Lacroix. This is a battle for the lead. And he's brought Alex LeBay along with him. Remember, LeBay let Ranger go by. I think assuming Ranger was faster than he was, he couldn't catch the 74. Now they've both caught up to Kevin Lacroix, and the battle is on. Eight laps to go. And Andrew Ranger is looking underneath. This is the closest that anybody has been to the 74 of Kevin Lacroix all day. Here comes Ranger to the inside. He sailed that car into the bottom of the racetrack, squeezes up in front of the 74, just left to lane. And he's able to move up in front of Kevin Lacroix's number 74, and he'll drive it deep into the corner to not give Lacroix any opportunity to fight back. drive off the 
corner for the Mopar number 27 using every single horsepower under the hood of that Dodge Challenger. Remember, Andrew Ranger, one of the drivers who stopped for a splash of fuel. The other two chasing did not. Remember also, Kevin Lacroix has already secured the bonus point for leading the most laps. Up until the last lap, he was the only driver to lead a lap. So now Andrew Ranger has taken away one of those bonus points, and Alex LeBay is giving Kevin Lacroix all he can handle for the second spot. Yeah, LeBay is all over the back end of the 74 of Kevin Lacroix. We should mention two different motor combinations in the leader's car, back to second and third. So Andrew Ranger, as the 74 did brush the wall off of turn number two. Have a look. You could hear it just there. It wasn't a big hit, but he was watching the mirror. Now contact between the Ford Fusion of Alex LeBay and the Dodge Challenger of Kevin Lacroix. And that could be a big deal. That could cut down the right front of LeBay or the left rear of Kevin Lacroix. Yeah, it's a big track to be rubbing two race cars together as they do. Three laps to go now in the visit. New Hampshire 100 for the NASCAR Pinty Series. Alex LeBay hangs back just a little bit. What he's trying to do is get a big run. He's been close to Lacroix and hasn't been able to finish it. Now he wants to get him from a distance and probably dive bomb the corner or Kevin Lacroix has found something in the car that he's able to pick up some pace. Remember, this is now a battle for second spot as your race leader is that little black dot up in the four, or the, up, way up in the distance, the 27 of Andrew Ranger. Yeah, he has checked out on this battle for the second spot. Andrew Ranger securely in the lead right now, but Alex LeBay is paddling for all he's worth. The Silver Wax, number 36, trying to find a little bite to complete that pass. He's able to get up alongside the 74 of Kevin Lacroix, but can't get past the bumper-to-bumper -bumper dodge. He just got a great run from the middle of one and two all the way to the exit. Same thing here in three and four, trying to get the power down. Is Andrew Ranger trying to put a lap on Julia Landauer? Landauer in the one lap, number 28 to the inside. They're teammates as we see the white flag. One more lap to go, now less than a mile for your race leader, Andrew Ranger. But look at this battle for a second. LeBay closed in on the back bumper, Ooh. squeezed to the inside. That could have been bad for Kevin Lacroix. Could have been bad for both of them. Remember, Lacroix, your points leader, coming into this race. He's now in a battle for second with a 36 of Alex LeBay. Andrew Ranger off of turn number four. Dejection for the driver of the 74. Let's take another look. To come out of turn four, I mean, obviously contact between the 36 and the 74. Kevin Lacroix tried to fight it as hard as he could, but caught the inside of the wall running out of room. Hard contact. Another look on board. That's a big hit for the bumper-to-bumper -bumper dodge of Kevin Lacroix. He's out, and he's okay. A little bit disappointed, but we'll be back with Victory Lane here in New Hampshire. The 32-year-old from Roxton Pond, Quebec, for the 28th time in his NASCAR Pinty Series career will hop out in Victory Lane. Tom? For the fourth time this year, Andrew Ranger is a winner in the NASCAR Pinty Series, triumphant and throwing that sign up into the air. Andrew Ranger gets congratulations from his girlfriend, Edith, yes, sir. and his team celebrating a victory. Wow, from where you were yesterday to today, what a difference. This team did a great job and you got another win. I have another win, but uh, that team did a great job. They are amazing, they worked so hard. 
And like you, know, like you say, we have like a little problem with the car yesterday, but the qualifier proved that we were fast and there you go, we won. So it's fantastic first time here for us with that we won. And uh, I want to thank Small Power. I want to thank my crew. The guys did a great job. I'm so happy for them. And uh, now we are leading the championship. Andrew Ranger did what he had to do, scoring a victory at New Hampshire. In decisive fashion, he did. Let's take a look at your auto value top 10. And this is interesting. It really is. We know the top three, of course, Ranger, LeBay, Kennington. How about Cole Powell in sixth, the steady run in a great fill-in drive. Alice Gannett behind the wheel of the 18, finishing seventh. Interesting, too. Kevin Lacroix all the way in 12th. Todd? Alex Lave comes up with a second place finish. Okay, tell me what happened coming out of turn four in the last lap. I just ran out of room, I guess. I mean, I went out of two on the, uh, underneath him. He ran me right, right down the track. I was underneath him out of four, and he tried to pinch me a little bit. I was loose. I, was, I mean, we're going for the checkered, and he, he ran me out of room out of two. There was no way I was going to give him a break. Especially, I'm never going to give a break to the 74 anymore, so I uh, just ran out of room, I guess. I mean, he's racing for points. He's got to think with his head a little more, I think. Just, just can't take my thing, the old Concord crew, uh, Silver Wax. I mean, we had a great car today. Good speed, 27. It was class of the field there in the last 25 laps, but we, I think we were second to him, so good run. Good second place finish. We'll take it. No love lost between those two, that's for sure. Alex LeBay has had a challenging season. He, he made no apologies for that finish. You look at the points, 11 points. Now the difference between Andrew Ranger and Kevin Lacroix going into the last event. Mathematically, it is still a possibility. 11 points is doable. It's not nearly as nice as a dead heat. And a gulp of maple syrup in victory lane for Andrew Ranger. And the best chaser we could have. This NASCAR on TSN telecast has been brought to you by E3 Spark Plugs, Born to Burn, VP Racing Fuels, and by Honey Goo from Clean Flow on the Honey of a Loop. From the mile long oval here in New Hampshire, we go to the Pinty's Fall Brawl next weekend at Chukasa. Let's crown a champion for Todd. And all of the staff here at TSN, I'm Dave Bradley. Thanks very much for joining us here in the Granite State. We'll see you next time. This copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our fans for your support, and we hope you enjoyed today's broadcast.